You're watching a video by Tech Tech Potato, the only semiconductor YouTube channel that knows how to bring home the chips. And don't forget, what's your minimum specification? We've recently done a video on the latest news surrounding Jim Keller, superstar silicon engineer, after he quit his post as senior vice president of the silicon engineering group at Intel after only two years, plus six months exclusive consultancy. The reasons for Jim leaving, officially, are down as personal reasons. These reasons are typically as broad as you like, sometimes interpreted as relating to health, while some people have stated that there may have been conflict inside Intel causing Jim to leave. He is well known for shaking things up at the companies he works for, and we understand he was hired at Intel to streamline the process, as well as help on new architectural designs. This could be CPU, there could be SOC, there could be AI. We probably won't know for a few years. One of the questions about Jim leaving is where he's going to go next. According to Intel's press release, and our conversations with Intel's communications team, Jim is still under an exclusive consulting contract for, with Intel for the next six months. This is different to a non-compete clause, which is typically made after a person leaves their role, which Jim has done, but without a consultancy. Beyond that, non-compete clauses are typically unenforceable in California anyway. Jim is a smart guy, he would have made sure it's not so much of an issue. So here are our thoughts on the availability for Jim to go to companies that people are often asking about. First up, AMD. This is touted as the big one, given that Jim has already had two stints at AMD. First, looking at the K8 processor and the hypertransport protocol, and the second iteration was dealing with high-level Zengold, Interconnect, and AMD Skybridge designs for pin-compatible ARM and x86 processors. Jim's first into AMD, with K7 and K8, lasted two years from 1998 to 1999. His second stint to AMD was from 2012 to 2015, only three years. If there's a common element to Jim's movement throughout his career, it is that he likes to go somewhere where there is a problem to solve. At AMD, at least the second time around, it was because the company needed an injection of performance in its traditional market in order for the company to survive. At Tesla, it was to create high-efficiency silicon for self-driving cars. At Apple, it was to design energy-efficient mobile processors. The reason why I believe it isn't AMD is because AMD has a strong CPU roadmap ahead. We already know about Zen 3, Zen 4, and AMD has even mentioned Zen 5. The company has been talking about its enterprise offerings, Rome, Milan, Genoa, and to a certain extent post-Genoa. Jim's career has been on CPUs, not so much GPUs, so for Jim to go to AMD would be him entering a company where the roadmap is already planned. Another name that keeps coming up in discussions is Nuvia. Nuvia is a new company that started in 2019 with the goal of shaking up the traditional server market, which is led by x86 and ARM-based designs. The goal of Nuvia is to design a bigger, better, and more accomplished server CPU than what we've seen from ARM or Amazon with Graviton or what anyone else is planning to do. Now, Nuvia has a substantial amount of talent already within the company. The CEO, Gerard Williams III, was chief architect at Apple for over a decade, focusing on the company's highly successful and very fast smartphone silicon. Before that, he spent a decade at ARM, as an ARM fellow, as a primary technical advisor for the ARM architecture. Gerard is known for his unique core designs, and had some crossover at Apple with Jim. Alongside Gerard at Nuvia is Manu Gulati, Senior Vice President of Silicon Engineering. He was the lead SOC architect at Google, and has spent eight years with Apple. There is also John Bruno, Senior Vice President of System Engineering, who has also spent time as System Architect at Google and Silicon Competitive Analysis at Apple. With these three people leading the company on the architecture and silicon sides, adding another person in there with the prowess of Keller would disrupt the boat too much. Nuvia is still fresh with regards to his investment, and is seeking to enter future funding rounds. Compared to Intel, Nuvia would be on the other end of the scale equation, and for all these reasons is why I doubt Jim would be hired even if he wanted to go there. Another name coming up a lot is Apple, another company with which Jim Keller has history. There has been a lot of talk about Apple pushing its own ARM-based chips into its MacBook laptop lines over the years, and each year that rumour grows stronger and stronger. Many people believe that 2020 is the year that this would happen. I even spoke to Rene Ritchie on his YouTube channel about the number of hurdles that Apple would have to overcome in order to switch from Intel's x86 designs to their own ARM chips. With MacBook seemingly going that way, the question then becomes if Apple is going to do the same with its Mac Pro. And do they need an engineer to build a powerful ARM chip to do so? 
Given Keller's successes at AMD with his input on Zen, would Apple happily rehire him in order to work on a project like this? Bearing in mind what I said about everyone at Nuvia just now, one of the driving factors for Nuvia existing, as far as we understand, is that Apple didn't want to build its own desktop chips. The Mac Pro, after all, isn't such a high volume part as a smartphone or a laptop. This is why I don't think Apple will be looking into creating ARM silicon for the Mac Pro anytime soon. The current Mac Pro is optimised for x86 and OpenCL, and has such a long update cycle. Before the latest Mac Pro was even launched, we were wondering if Apple would ever update that old trash can. They did, with a cheese grater. Plus, we could argue that Keller has built big performing chips at AMD, and whatever he did at Intel might be similar, so would he want to do the same thing again, but with an ARM design? One of the big topics recently has been the growth of state-funded and state-focused silicon, with the goal of pushing out the traditional AMD Intel ARM designs and going with something more tailored to the market in which it is built. I've written and spoken about the Chinese Shaoxin initiative, done with a joint venture with VIA, but ultimately this silicon has had the US cryptographic engines removed and the Chinese cryptographic engines added. It allows China to confirm there are no unknown backdoors, management engine tricks or anything like that in the hardware. This is similar to the Russian Elbrus processor initiative, which I've also done a video on. Now with the money that a sovereign state could pump into a project, do we think Keller would be interested in going down this route if he was offered a chance? I wonder what Keller's own government might think if he decided to go to one of the US's major trading partners and competitors in order to do so. Ultimately, China and Russia are quite far behind the curve when it comes to performance, and Xiaoxin's hardware is being as good as AMD's bulldozer on an average day, or Elbrus's processors are around 15% performance in rendering compared to first-gen Zen. To be honest, when you speak to Jim Keller, he seems like a laid-back guy. He's a windsurfer, and I'm not sure exactly how much surf you can get in China and Russia. The other alternative is for Keller to go to a startup. But let's be honest, he's made his millions. His success and reputation over the past two, three decades has meant that he's not short of a Jefferson or two. He could happily retire after his consultancy at Intel, leave the industry completely, or do what he wants. One avenue is that he could go to a startup, or start his own. The big steps forward in recent years for silicon design have been in AI hardware, both for big training datasets and for inference, especially batch one inference for video, which is what his focus was on with Tesla. A number of industry competitors in self-driving cars have said that Tesla Silicon has put them up to seven years ahead of the competition. With that in mind, I suspect Jim might be interested in doing something else with the knowledge he has on building AI Silicon, whether that's for some generic hardware or something specifically focused for a big company like Amazon, Azure, Google, Alibaba or Tencent. At the moment, we have almost 50 companies building AI silicon in some form. Intel has, on multiple fronts, purchased and binned companies based on their AI silicon uh, abilities. There is also Cerebrus with its wafer-scale AI, and we've also seen Graphcore, Grok, Gear Falcon, Mythic, Samba Nova, and Preferred Networks all come out with AI-based designs. There's a good chance that Keller could end up at one of those. For what it's worth, I don't think many of us expected Jim Keller to jump from AMD to Tesla when he did. He could very similarly make a jump into a different category of computing, such as quantum or neuromorphic computing, or perhaps even analog computing. It'll be very interesting to find out where Jim Keller ends up.